And now we're going to go over and we're going to take a look at the asphalt laboratory portion of Nino and Moore. Just to give you a little history, uh, the history of asphalt testing for quality control purposes. Initially, the, the first test method that was used was a Marshall. I'm sure it was named after a guy named Marshall who developed the method. But basically what it was is taking heated asphalt and compacting it into a four inch mold using a weighted hammer with a number of drops to uh, compact that into what, when pushed out of the mold, became a puck, like a hockey puck, except this one was a little thicker and you definitely wouldn't want to be hit by it. So that, that puck then was tested for air voids, for density, as well as for stability and flow. The next iteration of asphalt testing was beam density. Instead of a manual hammer, this time there was a large pneumatic machine and this machine had a kneading foot that moved around the mold and compacted and kneaded that asphalt into, again, a puck. That puck, again, was extruded and this time it was used for density, for air voids, and for stability. Now we've come into the 21st century and in the 21st century, we have super pave. And Nino Moore's super pave operation is what we would like to demonstrate now. I have with me today our expert in all things asphalt, Hector Herrera, who will be showing you how this is done. All right, so he's, Hector's bringing the mold out of the oven and put a paper on the bottom so that the asphalt doesn't stick. That mold is in the same oven as the asphalt so that they're at the same temperature which is right around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see why he's wearing those very uh, thick gloves so he doesn't get burned. In goes the asphalt in one lift. He's going to level it out now then place the paper on top. Again, just sort of a barrier so that it doesn't stick to the mold. Now he's gonna place that mold into the machine. We see you putting a, a, a top on. wrenching that down so the asphalt is in the mold you've got a top wrench down on the top or on top of the machine how does this work the piston has a piston underneath it ramps up as the piston is getting to its appropriate kpa on it it's going to swivel at 1.1 percent angle that'll be your gyration so the, uh, it, the, the piston comes up and it applies a great pressure, pressure against the bottom of that asphalt. Correct. And I think you said it was 600 kilopascals? Correct. Wow. All right. And then once you turn the machine on, the machine actually moves around at its base and uh, it, it, it forces that asphalt into a minimum. of This one will be at 60 millimeters in height. So it's 60 millimeters in height. All right, great. Well, let's see how it works. This is our end product of the material. After the gyrations we have permitted to have at 60 millimeters thick in height, this is the end product of the self out of the mold. All right, so here we have the test specimen. Now, before we even got to this point, there were a number of things that were done on this material. At, before the projects even begin, we do what's called a mix verification. In other words, the contractor submits a mix design, says this mix design is going to do what needs to be done on this project. So we take the sample in, we take it as aggregates, 
as well as the um, asphalt cement or the oil uh, separately. We do all sorts of quality control testing on those aggregates before it ever gets to this point. Then we combine the oil and those aggregates together into this mix and we create these test specimens. Now from this particular test specimen, we're able to get the density, we're able to get the air content or voids that are inside of this test specimen. We also then take specimens like this and we cut them and we load them into a, a frame here that we're going to put into this machine. This is known as the Hamburg wheel. We cut them because they need to fit into this figure eight frame. In that figure eight frame, the Hamburg wheel is able to run back and forth and back and forth across those test specimens. So Hector, let's go ahead and raise that up, raise it. So now Hector will load these two test frames into the water bath. Now this is going to be testing the quality of the asphalt mix under some pretty adverse conditions. Water temperature is about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. He's going to load those frames in and then the two wheels that are over his head right now will come down on top of the test specimens. For the safety of the technician that's operating, the doors are closed. So the wheels are coming down and they're going to sit right on top of those two test frames, which contain four asphalt test specimens. And now the wheel begin, the wheels will begin to move backwards and forwards. You can see the movement. Each one of those arms weighs about 180 pounds and they're going to run back and forth and back and forth representing wheel movement on top of the asphalt in real life conditions now of course it, these are metal wheels uh, so it's it's more extreme than what you would get on the highway but they will run back and forth and depending on the oil the type of oil the pg of the oil that's used, it prescribes how many passes this thing this is going to make. But the the least number is 10,000, and then it goes up from there, 15,000, 20,000 passes back and forth. So this goes for hours and hours. And in the end, what we'll see is that these wheels have created ruts. Uh, or, or divots, indents, into the top of that asphalt sample or the two asphalt samples they're running over. This machine actually measures the uh, amount of, or the depth of the rutting as it's going along. So here's the final product of the Hamburg wheel. And you can see that there is a path, a rut that has been in, uh, induced in these samples as a result of the 10,000 passes of that wheel over their surface. All right, so with that, we've shown you the testing that we do on the asphalt. There's more than this, but the super pave, we really wanted you to see the equipment and how it's used. This is done at the, uh, at the point where the job is not yet started for the mix verification, the contractor submitted mix. Then it's done at the beginning of the project, the startup testing, which is essentially the same thing to see that what is actually going on to the ground at the job site 
is the same as what was tested. From that point forward, if they continue working and don't stop at any point for more than 45 days, then the only other testing that's done is core samples are taken, the asphalt that's being placed in the field, and bulk samples are being brought in, both of the aggregates and the completed mix. And in the laboratory, we are doing the sieve analysis of the aggregates, we are doing the rice density of the completed asphalt mix, and then we have the cores where we do a bulk density, compare that to the rice density to see what the relative compaction is, as well as uh, measuring the air voids. So that's how quality control is performed on asphalt using the super paved methods.